Hello and welcome to Tech Thursday. My name is Ray Marquina and in today's video tutorial, I'm going to be guiding you through how to set up notifications within Synapse pipelines using a logic app. This can become very useful in cases where we want to monitor the execution of pipelines that are failing, yet we don't necessarily want to log into Azure portal to make those determinations. In this example, we're going to design a logic app that will send out an email notification and we'll execute that logic app using a Synapse pipeline activity when some activity fails. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to navigate to uh, Synapse Analytics and we're going to create a brand new pipeline. I'm going to call this PL Notify. And we're going to bring in a script task and we're going to make this script task fail. So I'm going to bring in a linked service. I'm going to add a database that I know doesn't exist. And I'm just going to select from that database. Now, when I run this, again, I have every expectation that this is going to fail. But let's imagine that this is a critical process and we instantly want to be notified as soon as this activity fails. Well, we could go to Azure Monitor and we could see that it has failed. But maybe a better way of doing this is by way of using a logic app to get an email notification. That's exactly what we're going to do next. So if I navigate over to a logic app that has been provisioned, what we're going to want to do is go under workflows and click add. So we're going to add a new workflow. We'll give it a name. We'll specify the state type. And I'll just grab the first one here called stateful and click save. Now, once this is saved, we can go into that workflow and we can start designing. So under the developer uh, tab here, there is a designer uh, that I can select. And the way that we're going to do this is by way of two operations. We're going to do a request and then we're going to do an email. So let's search for request. And within request, there is going to be an HTTP request when it is received. So I'm going to click on that. And what I'm going to want to pass into this request body are some parameters that I want to send over to the email task. So I can do this either writing some raw JSON or I can use this uh, sample generator to uh, facilitate in that step. And this is very nice because all I need to do is add some attributes that I want to include. So I'm going to add the two. I'm going to add the subject. And I am also going to add the uh, email body. Uh, so, and in this particular context, I don't need to write all the JSON. Uh, it's actually written or generated for me, and all I need to supply are the attributes. So here are the attributes that I'm going to want to include, uh, who we're sending it to, a subject line, and an email body. I'm going to click Done. And what you're seeing now is that the uh, generator gave us the full JSON that is needed for this application to work. We get a friendly reminder to say that the content type that we're going to want to include is application JSON. I'm going to click Got It. And then we're going to go on configuring the uh, HTTP request. So we're going to say that this is a method and that this is going to be a post method. Now, the next step that we're going to want to do is configure our email. So I am going to search for Office 365. And Within here, there should be something called um, send email. That's exactly what we're going to do. Uh, so I see a send email v2. I'm going to click on that. And this is where we're going to map those parameters uh, from the HTTP request. So you can see we have a two subject and body. So if I click in the text box, I get a pop up that comes in. And um, there's this uh, gray bar that says see more. And this is where I'm going to pass in my parameters. So two is going to map to two, subject to subject, and my body is going to map to the email that um, I also created. So now that we've mapped our parameters, I'm going to go ahead and save this logic app. And this is going to now allow us to configure our pipeline to use this logic app. Now, before we do that, we are going to need to get the um, post URL. So I'm going to copy this URL and navigate back into my pipeline. And I'm going to bring in a brand new activity. Additionally, I'm going to create three new parameters. So basically the same ones that you saw to subject and email. And I'm going to specify values here. 
Now, ultimately, we're going to want to, when you're developing, you're going to want to do this uh, maybe through some metadata-driven application, maybe like a control table so that you're not hard coding. But for this demonstration, we're just going to hard code these values. I'm going to say your pipeline has failed. And we're going to um, send the body of uh, this is a test to um, let you know that your pipeline failed. OK, so now that we've configured those parameters, we can now um, configure the rest of our activity, our web activity. So we are going to post in the URL that we copied. We are going to set the method as post. We are going to uh, set the header, the content type, as application JSON. So let me go ahead and copy this over here. So we'll say content type, and we will say application JSON. Paste that in. And I believe the last thing that we now need to do is configure the body of our JSON. Uh, I'm sorry, of our email. So this is where we're going to be passing in those parameters that we set up. So we're going to want to include the two, the subject, and the email. Oops. Let me format this properly. Okay, and now that we have our base there, we can map these parameters appropriately. So two will go to two, subject to subject, and email to email. Now I do get uh, this error saying that this is unrecognizable, so I will need to use string interpolation in order to uh, make this into a recognized format. And in order for me to do that, I just need to add the at symbol and curly braces to each of my uh, variables. So let me go ahead and do that. And then because this is also JSON, I am going to have to ensure that each of these attributes is surrounded around double quotes. So let me go ahead and uh, do that as well. So we got this one done, this one, and we just need to add a double quote here. So this is ultimately the uh, JSON body that we're going to be looking at. And all, all we're, again, we're doing is we're just passing in these values that are expected from the HTTP request, which are then going to be ultimately sent to that uh, send email uh, operation. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And now, instead of us having to log into Azure Portal and go into Monitor to see whether or not a, a pipeline has failed or not, we will now get notified via, via email. Um, for that activity. So I'm going to go ahead and refresh. You can see that our script has failed. Our web activity has also failed. Let me see what happened. Looks like there is a problem with my body. Let me see if uh, we can quickly figure this out. Yep, and it looks like I just forgot a double quote here. So let me go ahead and add that. Let's go ahead and run this one more time. So I'm allowed one error per demonstration. So this will be my one error. So again, the script task we expect to fail. And after the failure has occurred, our web app should succeed. And you can see that it does. It is 312. And if we look at our email, 313, we have now received a brand new email letting us know that our activity has failed. And now we have the know-how or we have the ability to go in and remedy the application. Now, this is just a uh, very simple application, but you might want to pass in better metrics such as pipeline ID, run ID, things of that nature that are going to be better utilized to help you troubleshoot the issue. So that is going to conclude our tutorial for today. I hope you learned something of value. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we're going to see you in the next one.